Hi my beauties, it's Madeline and so today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Not a makeup video or anything. But I am actually going to be reading you guys the first two chapters of this book called Land of Stories, The Wishing Well. So let's get started. Prologue. The Queen's Visit. The dungeon was a miserable cold place. Light was scarce and flickered from the torches bolted to the stone walls. Full smelling water dripped inside the inside from the moat circling the place above. Large rats chased each other across the floor searching for food. This was no place for a queen. It was just past midnight. And all was quiet except for the occasional rustle of a chain. Through the heavy silence, a single set of footsteps echoed through the halls as someone climbed down the spiral staircase, steps into the dungeon. A woman emerged down the steps, dressed head to toe in an in a emerald cloak. Cautiously, she tosses, she tosses, she tosses, Sorry guys, I can't pronounce this right. She cautiously made her way past the row of cells, spark sparking the interest of many prisoners of the prisoners inside. With every step she took, her pace became slower and her heartbeat became faster and faster. The prisoners arranged according to a crime. The deeper she walked into the dungeon, the cooler and more dangerous the criminals became. Her sights were set on the cell at the very end of the hall, where the prisoner of special interest was being watched by a, very, by a large private guide. The woman had come to ask a question. It was a simple question, but it had consumed her many her thoughts every day. Kept her kept her lying awake most nights and was the only thing she dreamed about it, with the little sleep she managed. Only one person could give her the answer she needed, and that person was on the other side of the prison ahead. I wish to see, to see her, the cloaked woman said to the guard. No one is allowed to see her, the guard said. Almost amused by the request. I'm on strict orders by the royal family. From the royal family. The woman lowered her hood and revealed her face. Her skin was pale as snow. Her hair was as dark as coal. And her eyes was as, were as green as the forest. Her beauty was known through the land. And her story was known even beyond that. Your majesty, please forgive me. The guard, the stunned guard, apologized. He quickly bent into a, into an overly pronounced bow. I wasn't expecting anyone from, from the palace. No apology necessary, she said, but please don't speak of my presence here tonight. Of course, the, guard, the guards said nodding. The woman faced the bars, waiting for them to be, right, to be raised, but the guard hesitated. Are you sure you, wish to go in, you want to go in there, your highness? The guard said. There's no telling what she is capable of. I must see her, the woman said, at, at any cost. The guard began turning a large circular lever and the bars of the cell rose. The woman took a deep breath and continued past them. She journeyed through, the, through a longer, dark, darker hallway where a series of bars and barriers were raised and then lowered. After she walked past them, finally she reached the end of the hall. The last of the bars were raised and she stepped into the cell. The, the prisoner was a woman. She sat on a stool in the center of the cell and stared up at a small window. The prisoner waited a few minutes, a few moments before acknowledging the prisoner behind her. It was the first prisoner she had ever had and she knew who it was without looking. There 
was only one person that could be. Hello, Snow White, says the queen very softly. Hello, stepmother, Snow White replied with a nervous quiver. I hope you are well. Although Snow White had rehearsed exactly what she was going to say, what she wanted to say, she was now finding it nearly impossible to speak. I hear that you are the queen now, her stepmother said. It is true, said Snow White. I've inherited the throne as my father intended. So, to do what I do, I owe this honor. Have you come to watch me wither away, her stepmother said. There was such authority and power behind to her voice. It was known to make the strongest men melt like guys. On the contrary, Snow White said to understand, to understand what. Her stepmother asked sharply why Snow White hesitated, why he did what he did. And finally, and with this, finally, Finally said, Snow White saw a weight lifted off her shoulders. She finally asked a question, question that had been strongly on her mind. After the challenge was over, there are many things about the world that you don't understand, her stepmother said, and turned to look at her stepdaughter. It was the first time in a long time that Snow White had seen her stepmother's face. It was a face of a woman who had once possessed beauty without flaw and the face of a woman who had once been queen. Now the woman sitting before her was just a prisoner who, whose looks had faded into a permanent sorrow, sorrowful scowl. That maybe, Snow White said, but can you blame me for trying to Find some sort of reason behind your actions. The recent years of Snow White's life have had been had become the most scandalous of the kingdom's royal history. Everyone knew the story of the fairy of the fair princess who had taken refuge with the seven dwarfs while hiding from her jealous stepmother. Everyone knew the infamous poisoned apple and dashing prince, prince who saved Snow White from false death. The story was simple, but after, but the aftermath was not. Even with a new marriage and a monarchy to occupy her time, Snow White found herself constantly wondering if the theories of the stepmother ran, stepmother's vanity were true. Something inside the new queen refused to believe that someone could be so malicious. Do you know why, why what they're calling you out there? So I asked. Outside these, the prison, these prison walls, the world refers to you as the evil queen. If that's the word, if that's, if that is what the world has labeled me, and that is that that name I shall learn to live with the evil queen said. Once the world has made a decision, there is little anyone can do to change its mind. Snow White was astonished to how little her stepmother cared, but Snow White needed her to care. She needed to know there was some humanity left in her. They wanted to execute you after discovering your crimes against me. The whole kingdom wanted you dead. Snow White's voice faded into a whisper. Fold, failed into a faint whisper. As she fought off the emotions inside of her. But I wouldn't allow it. I couldn't. I was supposed to thank you for sparing me. The evil queen asked. If, if you expect to fall at your feet and express gratitude, you've come to the wrong cell. I didn't do it for you. I did it for myself, Snow White said. 
Like it or not, you're the only mother I ever have known, I have ever known. I refuse to believe that you, that you are the soulless monster the rest of the world claims you to be. Whether it's true or not, I believe you. There was a heart deep inside of you. Tears rolled down Snow White's face, pale face. She had promised herself that she would stay strong, but she had lost control of her emotions. Once she was in her stepmother's presence, then I'm afraid you're wrong, the evil queen said. <coughs> the only soul. I'm afraid you're wrong, the evil queen said. The only soul I have I've ever had I've ever had died a long time ago. And only heart you'll find is my poisonous heart of stone. The evil queen did indeed have a heart of stone, but not inside her. A rock shaped like the size of a human heart was on a small table in the corner of her cell. It was the only item the evil queen had had been permitted to keep when she was arrested. Snow White recognized the stone from her childhood, and it, it has always been very, very precious to her stepmother, and the evil queen had never let it out of her sight. Snow White had never been allowed to touch it or hold it, but nothing was stopping her now. She walked across the, the cell and picked it up, and curiously stared at it. It brought back so many memories, all that neglected her, and sadness her stepmother caused, had caused her as a child rushed through her. All my life, I only ever wanted one thing, so I said, your love. When I was a girl, I used to spend hours hiding in a place, in a palace, just hoping you would notice I was missing, but you never did. You spent days in your chambers with your mirrors, your skin, creams, and the stone. You spent more time with strangers, with strangers with anti-aging methods than you ever did with your own daughter, but why? The evil queen did not answer. Tried to kill me four times, three of which you attempted yourself. Snow White said, shaking her head in disbelief. When you dressed as an old woman and came to the George cottage, Meet me at Phyllis Cottage. I know it was you. I knew you were dangerous, but I kept letting you in. I kept hoping that you would change and, and that you harm me. Snow White had never confessed this to anyone, but and she couldn't help but bury her face in the palms of her hands after and cry after saying it. You think you know about heartbreak, the evil queen said so sharply that it startled her stepdaughter. You know, you know nothing of pain. You never received affection from me, but from that moment, and from the moment you were born, you were loved by a whole kingdom. Others who, however, are not so fortunate. Others, Snow White sometimes, sometimes have the only loves there they've ever known taken from them. Snow White didn't know what to say. What love was she referring to? Are you speaking of my father? Snow White asked. The evil queen closed her eyes and shook her head. Navite is such a strong privileged trait, she said. Believe it or not, Snow White, I had my own life before I came into yours. Snow White grew quiet and slightly ashamed. Of course, she knew her stepmother had a life prior to marrying her father, but she had never considered what it had consisted of. Her stepmother had always been such a private person. Snow White had never, never had a reason to, 
Where is my mirror? The evil queen demanded. It's to be destroyed, the Snow White told her. Suddenly, the evil queen's stone became much heavier in Snow White's hands. Snow White didn't know if she was really, if this was really happening, or if she was just imagining it. Her arm became tired of holding the stone heart. She had to put it aside. There's so much you are not telling me, Snow White.